Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 36 is where we resume today's study. You can study all of the Bible with me, just like we're going to do today, verse by verse, using my audio Bible messages at the Bible versebyverse.com. That's the scripture verse by verse website found at the Bible versebyverse.com. Choose from four series going through the entire Bible, then choose the book, the chapter, the section, click and listen. And remember, all you need to bring is your Bible to the Bible versebyverse.com. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Build thee an house in Jerusalem and dwell there, and go not forth from there anywhere. You know, Shimei, if, you were, if you've been with me from the beginning, like through First and Second Samuel, maybe you remember this fella. Shimei ought to be on his knees, thanking Almighty God for his great mercy. Because when David was leaving town, fleeing from his own son, Absalom, who had usurped the throne. This man, Shimei, threw rocks at King David and cursed him when he, was, when he was going through that very difficult time. As he left in disgrace, being run out by his own son, Shimei threw rocks at him and cursed him. And some of David's men wanted to cut Shimei's head off right on the spot. But David spared him. He said, well, who knows? God maybe sent him. Ah, David. David was well aware of his own sins and was willing to take God's punishment. So he spared Shimei. And even now, Shimei is spared execution and simply confined to Jerusalem, by rights, he should be dead. But he's getting a second chance. If a person has not repented of their sin and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but they're still alive, it is because God is giving them a second chance. Or, may I say, another chance. But you ought to count your blessings, mister, that you're still breathing and not burning in hell if you haven't repented and received Christ because day by day you sin against God and he has every right in the world to kill you and send you to hell on the spot, but he hasn't because he's given you a chance to get saved. Shimei has a chance right here. And he continues in verse 37, Solomon does, For it shall be that on the day thou goest out and passeth over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thine own head. Shimei was showing mercy, but that mercy had a limit. If he steps out of the city limits, He's going to die. God is showing a lot of mercy to sinners who still have not come to Christ. But that mercy, too, has a limit. If they die without Jesus Christ, the hammer of God's judgment is going to fall on them. 38. And Shimei said unto the king, The saying is good. As my Lord the king hath said, so will thy servant do. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. 
Shimei is content to live with the restrictions because he's just happy to be alive. Maybe he's not going to have everything that he wants. He's not going to be able to leave town. But he will have everything that he needs. And right now, he's content with that. 39. And it came to pass at the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Achish, son of Maaka, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants are in Gath. Shimei's slaves skipped town. And now the price of obedience to the king's command has just gone up. He really wants those slaves back. The problem is he can't go get them without being disobedient and breaking his prohibition and leaving town. See, the real test of obedience is when you really want something but God says no. Anybody can obey God when it goes in, in line with what you want. But when every cell in your body is screaming to do something that is wrong, that's when the real test of obedience is there. 40. And Shimei arose and saddled his ass and went to Gath, to Achish, to seek his servants. And Shimei went and brought his servants from Gath. Shimei thought he could bend the rules and get away with it. Too many people mistakenly believe that God's rules are, yes, they're proper, but somehow they are able to bend them anytime they want to and everything will still be fine. Well, let's see, verse 41. And it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath and was come again. So the secret is out. The Bible says God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it be good or evil. 42, And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make thee to swear by the Lord? And admonish thee, saying, No, for certain, on the day thou goest out and walkest abroad anywhere, that thou shalt surely die. And thou saidest unto me, The word that I have heard is good. Shimei is like so many others, excited about doing the right thing at first. But then the newness wears out. Or there's a price to pay for doing the right thing. And they quit. 43. Solomon says, Why then hast thou not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I have charged thee with? And I'll tell you why. It is because he is no longer grateful simply to be alive. But he has become greedy and complacent, and he wants more than that. That's why he did it. People rebel against God when they are not satisfied with the good things that God gives them. But in their greed, see, they want more. That's why people sin. It's not because your mom told you that you were stupid when you were six years old. It's not, it's not because your dad spanked you when it was your brother who did the bad thing. It's because you lust after sin. You choose to sin of your own free will. I got news for you. Nobody's, nobody has it easy. Life is a challenge to everyone. And God's laws are a challenge too at times. Some more than others. And it's never an excuse to break those laws. But people rebel against God when they're not satisfied with the good things that God has given them. But in their lust for more, they sin. 
That's right. God never, God never withholds what we need and forces our hand into sin. 44. The king said, Moreover, to Shimei, thou knowest all the wickedness which thine heart is aware of, that thou didst to David, my father. Therefore the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thine own head. It is payday for this sinner, and he's not going to like it. Notice verse 45. And King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. When Shimei cursed David, he said that God was against David and therefore would take the throne away from David and his family. But here Shimei is the one who is about to be executed. Those who claim to have a word from God and presume to speak like a prophet concerning God's will for someone, they better be very cautious because God doesn't like it when people say, thus says the Lord. I had a dream. I had a vision. God spoke to me. God showed me. God told me like that one joker, word of faith joker on television said, God showed me that he is not a trinity, but actually there are nine persons in the Godhead. God showed me that. He told me that. Oh, really? Mister, you are going to get hit so hard for speaking presumptuously in the name of God in addition to your false teaching, your heresy, you're going to get hit so hard that your teeth are going to chatter and your head is going to spin. 46. So the king commanded Benaniah, the son of Jehoiada, who went out and fell upon him, that he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. If someone thinks that rebellion is cool, they better get God's perspective on it. It's not cute. It's not cool. It's not funny. It is, it is not a sin that should be tolerated. God says rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft to him. And the end of Shimei should be a lesson to all would-be rebels. Let's go into chapter 3. And Solomon made a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Well, this marriage was not based on love. It was based on politics. He married the king of Egypt's daughter to promote peace and because it was good business. It was good for business. You can marry someone because it makes economic sense. You can marry someone because it is comfortable. But I sure don't recommend it. If God has a marriage partner for you, don't settle for less than his best. Let God give you the complete package. That means you'll have a spiritual foundation with your husband or your wife. That's the most important thing. Two, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. Uh, so a temple had not been built yet, but the Israelites still had that big tent, that tabernacle that was designed for worship, and that was to be the only place where people worshiped. The high places spoken of here were leftover shrines and altars of the pagans that used to live in the promised land. The pagans would practice religious prostitution on those high places. And they would also take their firstborn babies, kill them, and place them in jars and offer them to their pagan gods on those high places. God wanted his people to worship him at the one tabernacle and under the supervision of the priest, according to the written word of Almighty God. 
Well, we'll pick it up in uh, verse 3 next time. Remember, you can study all the Bible with me. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be by praying for me and praying for God's Word. And when you take a break from studying at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, prayerfully give us a Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.